and we have the ability to refer to elements in a variety of ways. And I'll give you a look at this with an actual Flexi layout. So here we've got a kind of a complicated hierarchy. We've got a group one, a group two, first element, and a second element in group two, and then a first element that's a member really of group one. So if we wanted to refer to using script the first element when setting say relations for the second element, we can just refer to first element. And that looks like this first element. We can just refer to it that way. But what if we want to refer to these two elements, maybe the second element in group two and the first element? Then we're going to have to do something different, and we can go ahead and refer to, say, group one dot first element uh, versus group one dot group two first element or second element. So in order to use these more distinguished names, we can simply open up each of these elements. And under the properties, the general tab, we've got the full name right here. So we can certainly copy and paste that and use it in code. So again, if we want to write code that refers to these two elements referring to each other, then we can simply state first element or second element because they're in the same group. And if you are referring to first element using the full name or the second element, let's say, using the full name and in your code, and then you drag that, you reorganize it and you place it somewhere else, that code's going to break now because it's referring still to the full name that's uh, no longer true. It's no longer your code. Of course, it's true here, but your code is referring to um, group one dot group two dot second element, and that would be incorrect. So let's talk next about uh, global constants. So you can define global constants for uh, usage in Flexi layout language, and here we're defining a rectangle of a certain dimension. And I can jump over and show you another way that I've used global constants, and that's for database connection strings. So I'll flip over. And we can see that I'm performing a database lookup on one of, on several of my fields in this form. So if I just look at the invoice number, and I look at um, my keyword. Uh, we know that when I'm looking for keywords, I could simply search for the keyword invoice number, and I could specify that in static text. And if I have different variations, I can um, separate them with pipe symbols. Or I can make a connection using a connection string and a simple SQL query. And that has some big advantages. Um, I can search from a bank of keywords that are stored in a database, and it's a dynamic list, so I can add those keywords uh, pretty much whenever I want. Um, and they will be updated immediately when I search in Flexi Capture. Um, but rather than specifying this string again and again in all these different areas of my form, say PO number and invoice date and invoice total, happen to be, this is not a Flexi Capture for invoice layout. This is something um, that I built. Um, rather than when I migrate from one environment to another, it makes more sense to uh, create a constant. So you can start with this connection string uh, using our tool to build the connection string out, um, and then um, deselect that and go over to the Advanced tab and write a little bit of simple code where you've got a basically a SQL query here, and then we've got a Flexi layout language command search text from database, and then this connection string, which is a constant, I'll show you that in a second, 
and then select string was just defined right here. So by moving this over to Flexi Layout Language, I can simply change the connection string, and that affects all the fields in my layout that refer to that database. So if I'm migrating from one environment to another, that's very simple uh, to do. So let's take a look at where that is. We'll go into Flexi Layout Properties, and there's a Constants tab, and there's I defined a constant called Connection String, and then I simply place that same connection string here, and I uh, put it inside of quotes. And that's been a real time saver for migrating from one environment to another. Let's talk next about different uses of global constants other than the ones that I defined. So I'll just let you take a look here at some of the other use cases that uh, have come up for uh, different people, and you'll notice that global constants can be applied to different types, so uh, string and rectangle types and region types, etc. And we can talk next about variables. First off, only predefined variables can be used, and the variable names must always be unique. They can't match the name of a global constant or an element. You can declare a variable by specifying its name, its type and name, as we see here. Then you can also declare an and initialize by using an expression. And let's talk about user-defined properties. So at the element level, we can define a typed variable. So let's just go ahead and see where that's done. For this element, uh, group one first element, I could, for instance, just type in rect r. And I can use and change that variable in the properties of the element here. or you can use the values from those variables in another element, but you can't change them from another element. And so from elements below, you can only read them. And here we see some sample code. This example searches for two address components, uh, a city character string, and a subway station character string called station. The subway station is specified only if the city, in this case, is Boston. So to speed up flexi layout matching, we specify a from Boston property for the city element. This property is true if the city element is detected and has the value Boston, and false in any other case.